accelerate curiosity and ignite imagination at the world famous Volo Museum. This family owned business has had made major upgrades and they're ready for, uh, for you to take a ride through their archives of mechanical marvels and history. So take a look. Volo Museum is still a family owned business. This is a fourth generation family business that started from nothing on the same property. They grew up on this property and now it is what it is today. When we first started for the first couple decades, it was a car showroom. So you could come in here for an hour or two, knock it out and then go about your day. But I would say just in the last three, four years, we've put easily over $10 million, not only into new exhibits and attractions, but also just to make the place look a lot better. We've cleaned up all the buildings. We've just made everything look a lot nicer. So it's, it's kind of a Midwestern Disneyland. So right now we are in showroom four, we call this the vault. Most of the other exhibits kind of have a specific theme. This is just a bunch of really cool stuff that both adults and kids like. So we have these incredible Disney displays. Most of them are destroyed, so they're very rare. We have kiddie rides and moldoramas and these vintage first generation arcades from like the 40s and 50s. And what I really appreciate about the Grams family is that they spend crazy amounts of money to just keep this running. If you look past it and you walk past it, it's great, but they don't want that. They want you to hear it and play with it and experience it and ride these rides. Back then, these rides from like the 50s and 60s didn't have regulations, so they're way more fun than like kitty rides today. And looking at it is great, but we really wanted a really cool experience. So not only do the kids love Showroom 4, but we just added a whole new row of extremely historic and exceptional cars that you really won't see anywhere else in the world. The Amphicar is really cool. They only made a certain amount of these and they discontinued them pretty quick. And now there's only a few left, especially in this condition. And what's special about these cars is that it's a regular car, it goes 75 miles per hour, and the wheels turn the whole time, but when you walk in, let's say there's a, a ramp that goes into the water, the wheels keep spinning, and you just hit this little switch and props start going. So you just drive right into the water and keep going the whole time. So you could drive around, it only goes about seven miles per hour in the water, but it's a fully functional boat, so you can get around. And then when you hit the ramp to come back out of the water, the wheels grab and you just drive right out. So we have a, actually a collection of Batmobiles, but my favorite is the, the Tumbler here. That's from The Dark Knight, the 2005 movie with Christopher Nolan. And Christopher Nolan spared no expense when he did this. I mean, this is a full, this thing goes 100 miles per hour. This can do all the jumps, all the tricks. And uh, I think there's only five made. This was one of the stunt ones that was completely destroyed on set. So it's about 75% screen used movie parts and then other parts were fabricated just to make it look whole again. But this is the only one outside of the movie studios that's actually on display. There's a, a very famous car designer named Jay Orberg, who's a family friend of the Grams family. And he likes to do these tribute pieces. They're just these crazy outlandish cars. We have a 35 foot drivable hot rod guitar, a big roller skate, but this piano is my favorite. It's a, it's a gorgeous piano by itself. It's a fully functional hot rod. Like when you start it up, it's a loud revved up hot rod, but then also a player piano. So you could put a token in or you can play this piano while you're driving this hot rod. So if you're sitting in traffic, you can just start jamming on this piano. Everything is fully functional and it's a tribute to Elton John. It's such a cool piece. The Moxie car is really exceptional, especially because there's only a few left in the world. But this was a soda company that, you know, back in the day, were trying to promote their stuff. So instead of just having carts walk around and having guys walk around, they wanted to stand out. So they got these Model Ts and they put these horses right on top of them and then ran the Model Ts like conversion, basically. So you sit on top of this horse and you drive this car. And the nice thing is that all of the stuff is cool to look at. It's historic, but there's all these awesome stories behind every single one of them, and that's the fun part to share. The Duesenbergs, I have a full-blown crush on. These are incredible cars. They came out right around the Great Depression. Americans really wanted to compete with European cars because they were so much more elaborate, and especially people with money really couldn't show off anything around that time. So this little factory in Indiana, these two brothers made these insane cars. And to give you a kind of an idea of how much these cost, especially during the Great Depression, you had a choice of either buying 50 Model Ts, five houses, or one Duesenberg. They're incredible cars, and they still are today. They're very rare, and we actually have celebrities rent them quite frequently. We've had Leonardo DiCaprio rent one for The Great Gatsby, and just recently we had Brad Pitt handpick one for the Babylon movie that just came out about a year ago. Tell me 
funny about this, this is obviously in honor of Barbie. Of course, there was a Barbie <laughs> uh, VW bus, and this is an actual vintage VW bus that was completely refurbished, but they wanted to do an homage to Barbie. So this is a legit 21 window, fully drivable VW bus, but it has all the Barbie accents in it. This is incredible. It First of all, there's a complete sunroof. I'm going up. Look at that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I could live in this thing. And yeah, it drives? it's so neat. Yeah, it fully drives. It's such a fun thing. Can you imagine taking this out with your friends for the day to the beach or something? I'm like ready to live in this. Seriously. I'm ready to go on the road. I may need to put an offer in for this. This is perfect for me. And uh, you know what? I could even make you some coffee. There's, Would you this like works. Let's yeah. make a little snack. I'll make you a little snack, a little <laughs> coffee. Okay. Coffee will be right up. How cute is that? Yeah, they had a hard time pulling me out of there. Learn more about the Volo <laughs> Museum. Head over to volofun.com or scan this uh, a QR code on your screen right now and make sure to check out their socials at Volo Museum. I love that little van.